Hi everybody, I'm going to show you today on the Dangerous Fishbowl channel a few techniques that you can use to avoid fish deaths during water changes. Now obviously we all have to use dechlorinator or so-called dechlor to remove chlorine from tap water, but water changes can be a lot more complicated than that and uh, I've learned the hard way, meaning I've, I've lost uh, fish, trying to figure out what went wrong in some cases, so I want to share what I learned. So first of all, um, this is a python, uh, basically it's a gravel siphon, you can, you can get this from a bunch of different companies. Um, so basically, you'll, you'll notice that, you know, if you imagine this bucket is a fish tank, right? Um, you'll notice that I have it angled up and, I, and I've set it into the corner so it's mechanically stable. Why am I doing that? Well, because if I, if I were to lay it down on the gravel or I were to, you know, invert it and shoot the water into the gravel, then basically all the water coming out would be virgin tap water, right? So what we want is we want time for, for the dechlor to work. But more importantly, we want to prevent fish from swimming up in here for fun and exercise, as I've seen many of them do during the water change, okay? And the reason for that is that basically the way that, that ammonia or chlorine toxicity, let's just call it tap water toxicity, works in fish, and again, I found this out the hard way, is not that it kills them immediately. They'll, they'll swim up in there and they'll look just fine and you won't think there's a problem. And then half an hour, an hour later, they'll suddenly keel over dead. You know, they, they might flop around for 10 minutes, but you know, it, it ends pretty quick. And the way to avoid that is to make sure that they cannot go up into this, up into this gravel siphon while you're changing the water. All right, so um, if, it, if it's set against the corner like this and you might, you might fix it to a rock or something on the bottom to really stabilize it, make sure it doesn't tip over during the water change you know, because of fish bumps it or because of buoyancy issues or whatever. Basically, if, if you are shooting all the water into the corner, it'll spray out and mix with the existing water in the tank, but it'll do it in a much more diluted way, which really reduces the odds of, of having fish deaths, okay? Um, the other thing is, you can notice there's a, there's a valve here. Um, you turn it on and off. Um, basically, this controls the water flow, and uh, you can sit this on the edge of the tank as kind of an added stability. Um, if somebody, somebody who makes this kind of thing uh, is watching, definitely we need a way to clip this on the side of the tank because this is a real pain the way it is, right? If you don't hang this on the side of the tank, the whole hose will shoot out and, you know, water will fly all over the floor. It's a disaster. Oh, and by the way, um, don't mess with this unless you really know what you're doing. Um, I accidentally disabled it at one point and then turned on the water and you can imagine what happened when I finally turned it back the other way to the open position. Um, but anyway, um, the, other, the other thing that I, I, I need to remind you about is water depth, the, the, specifically the depth of the water change. So what I'm talking about is, uh, for example, 25% would be 25% of the way down from the top to the gravel, right? 100% water change would be all the way to the gravel, and obviously that would kill the fish, right? So, so an ongoing question is, you know, how, how much is a sufficient water change and how much is the, the maximum safe water change? Well, the answer is it, it really just depends. I mean, if your water is in excellent condition and you're just trying to change out a little bit of water, you know, 20% might cut it, right? On the other hand, if you're just starting a new aquarium and the ammonia is out of control or you got sediment coming from a pumice filter or something, um, you know, then you might, you might need to do a lot more than that. Now, I've actually changed 95% using this technique and I've, I've never lost a fish as long as I've used this technique. Um, but I don't recommend that simply because you have to remember if nothing else, you know, there's going to be a thermal shock if there's a, a difference between your tap water and your tank water, right? So, so you, you just have to be careful. And, and obviously, there is still some time required, even if you use this technique, for chlorine and ammonia to get neutralized. So except, except in really weird emergencies, I don't recommend anything more than 75%. That would be my maximum water change, I think. But again, you know, your maximum might be only 50, depending on the differences in, in parameters between your tap water and your tank water. So the bottom line is, you know, it, certainly if you're going to do a very deep water change, trickle the water in very slowly first until you get up to like 20, 25% full, um, because then you've got some, some backstore to dilute the new water, right? You don't want to shock your fish. You want to be very mindful of that. Bottom line, look at your fish, intuit your tank. Are they freaking out? Are they turning pale? Are they hanging out at the surface gasping for air? You know, those would all be pretty bad signs, right? Um, but basically, when I, when I put the dechlor in, so, so here's, here's my dechlor, right? I just, I just basically would, you know, use the amount that I, that I need uh, for the entire tank. And, and I, I tend to use two, sometimes three times the dose just because I have, I have heavy chlorine ammonia problems. So I, I would, you know, fill a couple of capfuls depending on the size of my tank. 
and I would pour it directly into this siphon here before turning on the water. So the second I turn on the water, I already have the entire dose I need for the entire water change uh, going on. So, so basically, at, at that point, the, the water and the dechlor and the ammonia remover are going to be able to mix much more effectively. Um, now, let me just show you something here. So this, this is the other end of this thing. Um, this actually comes with uh, a, a, plastic, uh, a plastic interposer by default that, that connects to your plumbing. All right, so um, I actually replaced that with this bronze, bronze interposer that I got from a, a plumbing store. I, I think Python actually has a bronze version that you can buy. But depending on, you know, the exact hose outlet or the, the sink you're attaching it to, um, you may need to change this. But I do recommend bronze, not plastic, because the plastic strips out and, and it falls apart. So um, the last piece of advice I'll leave you with, trust me, do not leave the house while you're doing a water change. That's all for me today. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Oh, hang on a second. I just wanted to show you a couple other things. Um, one is, this is how I drain the water. As you can see, I've got the hose flowing into an overflowing little glass jar. And uh, the interposer on the hose is suspended an inch or two above the bottom so that any fish that gets sucked up can easily swim out uh, of the hose and into the jar. They don't get stuck in the end of the hose. But the hose is also deep enough into the jar that it's not going to flip out. Um, I can't tell you how many times this has saved me from losing fish down the drain. Hey folks, let me show you what I'm doing here. This is what I call an inline water change. Inline meaning that the filter is still in line while I'm changing the water. Um, basically what's significant about this is that it allows me to prevent the problem of detritus spewing into the tank when you turn the filter back on. So unless you clean your filter perfectly well, there's always some loose detritus uh, in there. And basically when you, when you reconnect it and power it back on, it takes uh, this, this big chunk of, of crap and basically spews it into your, into your water that you just changed and kind of defeats the whole purpose. So by keeping it engaged, keeping it in line while you're doing the water change, um, you can avoid this whole problem. Now, obviously, um, I can only go so deep. I, I can't get uh, deeper than uh, just above the top of that intake down there. Otherwise, I'm going to lose the siphon and, and the whole thing's going to go wrong. So I'm going to stop it at that point. And, and frankly, that's 75%. So for me, that's a major change anyway. I don't, I don't want to go further than that for a lot of other good reasons. Um, but so you can see that, you know, th this basically also helps to aerate the tank and it helps to get the uh, dechlor and the ammonia remover circulating. Um, the other thing is that the reason I'm able to do this is that I'm using uh, pumice filtration. So the, basically my, my pumice filter on my, my hex tank, my root veil hex tank, uh, was going five months before the last time I had to service it. But that, but that filter was, uh, was done with finer grain pumice that tends to clog up the impeller after a while. This particular filter, as you can see in another video that I'm going to link in the description, um, this particular filter was assembled, and you, can, and you can see the entire assembly process, it was assembled with what I call perma pumice, as in permanent pumice. It's, it's about 3 8 inch uh, down to a quarter inch granules, so it's much better for sustaining water flow over the long term. So I'm hoping to get a full year out of this. If not, maybe never have to maintain it at all uh, until, until the impeller dies, so you know, we'll see. But I just thought I'd show you this technique. And uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, sucking, I'm sucking the uh, water out through my, through my Python hose. You can actually see it's kind of, uh, you can see it down there. It's, it's sort of buried in the gravel because I don't want to get fish into it. And of course, I got, I got my jar set up uh, in the bathtub in case that happens. But remember, when I refill, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mount it in the corner and I'm going to do the corner flow injection like I showed you previously. And uh, it looks like I'm going to... I'm going to have to stop this uh, in a few seconds because I'm about to lose siphon there on the intake. Uh, and by the way, um, just make sure, look out for the electrical issues because even though the power head's off and obviously the lights are off, technically there is a pathway that electricity could take between the motor in the canister filter and the water. So this isn't totally safe, but uh, in my personal opinion, it's safe enough. Uh, just be careful.